Bird! Bird on the ground! Bird! 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 Oh god, not again. We haven't gotten there yet. I was saying, I'm getting myself hyped, trying to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, we could always just go to the Zero Series first instead. <laughs> like, I mean, well, are getting really close to the end of the Mega Man uh, X Series, so we may as well do yeah. it. Yeah, it's like, well, I will say... I'm gonna go out the game that came out right after X6. Mega Man Zero, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically much it did I would come love... out, like, right after X6. Yeah, as much as I would love to do it immediately. I will admit, though, Zero One is a little rough because of, well, it's execution. It's first game syndrome with Zero One. Like, oh, you failed this mission. Do you want to retry? Nope. Okay, missions fail forever. Wait, what? And the open world mechanic of that game as well. Yeah, it's a little weird. Zero One's the only one I'm, like... Not a fan of. Gameplay's fine, and well. Yeah, some of the mechanics are a little iffy, though. Like leveling up the weapons, I'm not the biggest fan of. Oh yeah, that kind of thing. Like it plays well. It's just some of the things they introduced, especially the leveling up the weapons thing. It's better in the that sequel, definitely. Awful. Oh, zero one is and easy though. Depends. The final boss could be kind of rough, but. Some of the bosses have Spark Mandrel Syndrome, like, uh, Harpuya, I think? Yeah, Sage Harpuya is the worst one of that bunch. Yup. And you get the Zero Two where all of a sudden it's like, okay, time for the Spark yep. Mandrel Syndrome, and he starts rushing away. What? Yep, then he flies, you're like, oh shit, he got hard now. <laughs> damn it! I mean, I appreciate it, but god damn it! Like, damn, oh, no. this is almost. Fuck! <laughs> so much crushing, why, game? Oh no. <laughs> but yeah, Zero Two is probably the hardest game in the series, if you ask me. Like, that game gave me a lot of trouble. Zero Two, I'm not sure if I want to say Zero Two or also, Zero. Zero Three, I felt like, had a pretty good difficulty. Although the ending was a little easier than I would have expected. And again, like, the thing is, I say this, and I'm trying to remember. Yeah, there's one thing I, like, I oh, have no. to make note of is the fact that. I was doing the game doing, like, S-rank runs in that game. Yeah. So, when you're putting that into perspective, Zero Two's actually not that bad because the final boss gauntlet was only... Like, I'm not sure what was happening there, but... <laughs> well, there's one stage that makes Zero Two a living hell. Mainly for one segment. You're gonna have to give me 90 seconds, Zero! Oh, fuck! Yep, that, that stage segment is awful. I remember my first time going through the Zero games. After that stage, I just stopped playing for a while. I was just like, if it's gonna be this hard, I'm gonna need to take a break. Like, this is too much. Yeah. And I learned that using the shield, it helps. But yeah, oh, shield the language you're speaking, Grace. That's, that stage is definitely an S rank run killer. I wouldn't say just S rank run in particular, because getting S rank isn't terrible. Well, when you're going to have a pure 100 point run. Oh yeah, that would end that too. Well, if Seal gets hit more than once, your oh, S no. rank on that stage is probably done too. If you get hit once, you lose 100 points. Yup. It took me a while to oh, understand no. what the mission points were about. Wow, why did I keep dying like an idiot? It took me a while to understand what the mission points were about. Then that oh, no. stage, I was like, uh, what the fuck was I doing? What are you doing? I don't know. I think I was trying to jump over this thing. I keep hitting the spikes. You're getting yep. to the impatient phase? Yep. Like, I just want to get through the stage. It's not that hard. But yeah, it took me that friggin' CL segment. It was like, oh, there's like a criteria to be met for how well you complete the mission. Yeah, because the thing is, in the original Mega Man Zero, all you get for doing really good was having bosses change it, have an extra attack pattern attached to yep. them. But Zero Two, you get that, and you get a new ability! Yep. Makes you want to stay at least B rank. Which is what I tried to do. If I if I stayed above B, I was like, you know what, this is fine. This is fine. Or is it a... Yeah. Yeah, it's B, yeah. I, was, I was thought B it was A was rank. A that you required. Yeah, it might have been I'm A. I'm pretty sure it was A, because... Yeah, it was A, it no, was I about... about it. If I stayed above Cause... A, I was fine. Yeah, because I know that you need to at least have the A rank to be able to see the new moves. Yeah. And some of them were horrible. Yeah, I know the Zero ZX Legacy Collection, one of the achievements, I had to learn about that because, uh, one of the achievements was killing, uh, 
Oh, the water one, I forget her name. Leviathan? Yeah, Leviathan, yeah. You had to kill her, like, water dragon or whatever? Or ice dragon? Doesn't show yeah. up unless you're at least A rank overall. That's her EX skill or whatever. I was like, ow! Well, that's a little annoying. That is an interesting way about the thing about those games, though. Like, to make the most out of it, you have to, like, play well. That is an interesting way to do it. Yeah, and that's the reason why many people who have played the Zero games hold them in higher regard compared to most other... If you other, get good um, at them, you'll be handsomely rewarded. Yeah. It's kind of a thing that... Because they are also created by Inti Creates. Yes. And they're also the same people. They did Gunvolt, so... Yeah. They you can kind of tell that they have this sort of... When they develop their games, they do it in such a way that they make it... You, it's possible to do it at even like the bare essentials. Yeah, you can do I it. Need someone that... Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say you could. Yeah, you could do it just to complete it. But if you get good at it, you get even more out of it, which is awesome. I've seen someone actually do the entirety of the zero games with just the saver alone. Ooh. 100 point run, mind you, as well. Ooh. That's. You gotta rely on RNG to not screw you over as well. For some of the later games. Zero, zero two four. is. Oh, it's zero four. Yep. As much as I love Wild as a final boss, he is brutal. Yeah. That was like the one boss in zero four. Oh well, he was the boss that gave me the second most trouble. The one who gave me the most though, freaking. Yeah. First fight with him. That was. I got the hang of crap after a bit, but that when you first fight him after a while, it does take a bit. It, was, but, it, it took me like half an hour of restoring my saves to freaking beat him. I was like, this dude just won't let up. Like, I think I have him, and then he does a freaking wide range attack. It's like, dude, fucking stop moving, please. Yeah, Kraft is bad, and Wild's also bad, especially when you get the one pattern where he just decides to disappear off the screen and summon all eight freaking of the gentle judges on you. To, oh, yeah, uh, they all do a big attack on you. It's like, fuck, dude. It's like, oh. stop running for like two seconds and let me hit you. Oh, man. oh no. Oh, well, there we go. Down to single digits. <laughs> One of the birds. Uh, and now I'm further ahead. I don't know if I saved oh, myself some me. frames, but. <laughs> <laughs> Save some frames? Is that? Oh, I can't even go back there. Damn it. Oh, boy. But, yep, here we go. The last main stage for Knuckles. Seems really weird, considering that Sonic had two more worlds after this. But you'll see why later. Yep. Eventually. Because don't forget, I may as well say a little bit now. Knuckles' whole mission was to defend the uh, Master Emerald. Remember where that is? We're very near it. Yep. And, well, the last... Well, the last thing you gotta do with that... It's actually pretty interesting. Oh, sweet! Secret wall! The manual, wow. say that both, the manual will say that both of these missions occur, uh, both of these campaigns occur at the same time, but it makes no sense. Unless you want to... Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Because I was going to yeah, say, it makes sense if Knuckles did what he had to do and then came back to fight off Sonic. But because of the endings, it doesn't make any sense. Especially considering the first thing that comes up is, you know, Egg, ro uh, egg Robo Botnik wreaking havoc. Yeah. It'd make more sense if Knuckles' campaign happened first. Yeah. Because, well, he does all this to defend the Master Emerald, he defends it, and then, well, then Sonic comes along. And Knuckles is like, oh, no, it's another threat. Eggman warned me about this. Even though Eggman was the one that actually was harassing him the entire time, which is why I say... Not directly, but yes. <laughs> It's like, oh, don't mind that robot that clearly looks like me. I don't think Snuggles is that stupid. He's dense, but he's not that stupid. Robobotnik. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least this game, his friggin' tr being tricked is forgivable. Yeah. Cause, like, but, like, he's dense. He's yeah. not an idiot, is the thing. Yeah. Till later, they really emphasize that. Uh, but who was the one that really... Really Boom, hammered Boom decided to like, like go full cartoon on all their personalities. Yeah. I will still defend the show though. The show was actually still all right. 
I haven't watched any of it, so I've seen I'm bits and pieces of it. It's like... actually pretty funny sometimes. <laughs> like the writing was actually surprisingly good. Considering that book is a spin-off, I guess I'll cut it a little bit more slack. Yeah, I mean, I still won't go on my way to watch it. I've just seen some clips, and I definitely didn't hate it. It's just... It's got a weird charm. It's like, the creators of the TV show knew their fan base. I can just leave it at that. They knew who their fans were. Yeah, that's basically the entire gist of how... It seems with Boom. It's like they knew what their target is. I mean, That's about as far as I'm able to really yeah. comment on her. The TV show definitely nailed it better than the games did. Yeah. Like, if, and again, if that show was standalone, I feel like it probably would have been better, but because it got linked to that shitty game... Well... Yeah, it kind of put a... Kind of put a death warrant on it right at the start. Yes. And it's made by the same people conveniently, Sanzaru Game. It's almost like they have a... It's almost like when you see that... Um, game company, which is essentially run for the hills. Yep. Well, we have this game we don't want to put a lot of effort in. You guys do it. Yeah. And Sanzaru Games also were the same. They did Secret Agent Clank, and I think they did... I want to say they're the guys that did Sly 4, so it's like... Yeah, I can believe it. They seem to be really good at screw... seem to be really good at screwing things up. Not saying it to be mean, I'm just saying it's like, it's just observation. I wonder if they are gonna bring Sly back. Then again, friggin'. It looks like Sucker Punch is going their own direction, because people seem to really like Ghost Tsushima. Yeah. Even more so than The Last of Us 2. That. I mean, The Rest of Us. Yeah, The Rest of Us. <laughs> oh. oh, by the way, do you have an opinion on that story if you've seen it? For. Last of Us 2? Because apparently, there are a lot of people despise <laughs> it. Oh, you mean the rest of us, right? Yes, yes, the rest of us, yes, yes. I don't like it at all. I, I truly don't. Yeah, then again, that's... All the Last of Us, like... The gameplay itself, I will give, is solid for what it is. But... The whole world and the story around it's not really that interesting to me. Here's the thing... Like, I feel like The Last of Us came out in a time where they were trying to capitalize on The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, Phantom or Rise of all that? Oh, no! <laughs> a nice long fall. Like, okay, any day now. Ah! There's that. There's that death plate. <laughs> I feel like but, I'm yeah, Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah, that's kind of how I feel mostly about Last of Us 2 story as a whole. I don't hate it, oh, but no. it's just... It feels like it came during a time where people were in a huge, like, um... ...interested in The Walking Dead and all that, and I feel like that's what, uh, drove people to it. Yeah. For me, personally, I never was a big fan of The Walking Dead, even from the beginning. I've seen yeah. it bits and pieces of it, but it's just kind of like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, oh, no. I'm not really a big fan of zombie things in general, although... ...I do need to get to playing Resident Evil. Resident Evil is probably the only exception, although... Yeah. ...some say that's not technically zombies, that's just bio-weapons. Yeah. I just, I never got into it because my brother played it as a kid, and I when I was a kid, I saw it, I was terrified, I just never wanted to get to it. Yeah, that's what happened to me as well when I was young. I saw that stuff as a kid, and eventually... My brother eventually got RE4 later on, that still scared me for a yeah. while. Eventually I played RE4, I got bored one day, I'm like, you know what? Why not? Yeah. Well, I play on a professional for the first time. The first not the one, best idea. The first one I was in introduced to while I was still in elementary school. RE Remake. That, that was game horrifying is... for me as a kid. Dude, RE Remake is really good. And then one, one night my brother played that and Resident Evil Zero. They made the whole room dark. They blanketed up the walls so no light could get in. And just watching that, I was there with him. I was just like, I can't do this anymore. This is terrifying. <laughs> It's too much. Yeah. And then you get to RE4 and 5, where they essentially just throw away all the horror aspect of it. Yeah, just go full action, ham. Yeah. yeah, I definitely... I don't mind it personally, because the gameplay was fundamentally solved for RE4 and 5. Yeah. I definitely need to give RE Remake another go, because I did get it for free on Xbox Live Gold, like, not too long ago, so... Oh. Yeah. I know somebody requested that I play it too. I was just like, I'm not really into it, but the more I think about it, I was like, 
It's one of the best games of all time. I feel like it's one of those games I should play. It's the best, one of the better RE games. I mean, people will debate it between that and RE2 Remake now because RE2 Remake was just really good. It's still and really it's between RE Remake good. and RE4. Yeah. At least in my but opinion. RE4 because I haven't played RE2 Remake yet. I don't have a PC proper to really do that. Right. So. Yeah, that is true. I mean, I know it's still good, but I still usually hear better things about regular RE Remake. That's because RE Remake, I feel like, well, because RE2 kind of, RE2 Remake follows a little bit of a similar structure to RE4 and RE5. Right. It kind of loses what and made the original one special, I guess. Even though the thing about the original games is that the way they were designed was because of technical limitations, which is something that some people may not understand, and they think that the archaic design is just something that they did intentionally when that's not how it's supposed to work. Yeah. Well, RE Remake manages to do it pretty well from what I understand. I mean, RE Remake was made with the limitations in mind. Yeah. They worked around that, and that's something that, when you have the extra technology and you can finally do something better with it, it's like, okay, let's do it. And people start complaining, I was like, oh, well, we wanted these technical limitations because that was always an important fact defining feature of the game. Like, no, the only reason they did that was because it was um, a technical limitation. You would always be RE3 Make. RE3 Make, I think, has different problems. They were shoehorning a multiplayer aspect of that game for some reason. I don't know why they and keep trying to make. Four. I don't know why they keep trying to make Resident Evil multiplayer. It's so dumb. Yeah, and it ruined RE3 as a whole because Remake lost a lot of the mini campaign parts of it. Like a huge, a good chunk of the campaign was kind of ripped out from the original RE3 as a result. Oh yeah. And uh, the other thing I was trying to say, um, there was another thing. That happened as a result. Oh yeah, the mechanics of the game were unrefined. Right. They did rush that one out. It was like a year after RE2 made. I was like, that's fast! Oh, right, by the way, final boss! It's Metal- it's Mecha Sonic for some reason! Yep. Oh, beat him up like normal, that's that! Teabag time- Oh wait, he's not dead yet. Oh no. <laughs> Surprise! Final phase! So it turns out Sonic's not the only one who can become Super! That's right, Super Mecha Sonic! If you're called Sonic, chances are you- If you're a Sonic or a Hedgehog, chances are you can go Super, apparently. Yeah, apparently! <laughs> you need the Super Emeralds to do it as a Fox, though. You can do it as a Kidna regularly, and apparently Blaze can do it normally as well. Yes, well she has her Soul Emeralds. I feel like she's supposed to be, oh, like, yeah. the knuckles of her world, but... It know. makes more sense. Yeah. Because, like, here's the thing. You have Blaze, who's kind of supposed to be the Defender stuff, and if I'm to believe that, um, T Silver is from the same universe because Eggman Nega is an important adversary in his universe... Yeah. I'm to believe that Silver is the Sonic of that universe. Yeah. I mean, he is a hedgehog, so... Yeah. Like, that's how I see it, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, different days. I remember getting this boss fight when I was a kid. Getting here the first time was just fucking amazing. And this last phase is weird. The last of his power just fires fake rings like tails. Rings. And then he just faces out and you gotta hit him before he goes back to being super powered. Now it's T-Bag time! Oh, he's dead already. Oh no. <laughs> and there you go. He's dead. And with just like that, you win. A little less, a little anticlimactic compared to Sonic's ending, but you know, it's still a satisfying challenge. Yeah. At least you're given rings, and well, if you're not ready to deal with Metal's Mecha Super Sonic, because he can be fast to get back to that Master Emerald. He has a lot of invincibility frames. He's a pain. You can only hit him when he's heading back. And yeah, there you go. That's the ending you get. You throw the Master Emerald back in with the help of Sonic! The fuck? Yeah, this is why I say that it has to happen after... Mm -hmm. Um... Sonic's initial campaign, because... Why else would Sonic show up at the end after that? That is also true, yep. Yeah... I feel like it's more one playthrough than the other, not really both going on at the same time, but... Yeah. yeah you can make a case. 
Oh, yeah! That's also something for Sonic Mania, when you play through his Knuckles. That's another treat you'll be in for if you haven't seen that already. I guess I'll be looking forward to that when I get- Oh, yeah! I think I know what you're talking about! There are differences in Knuckles' campaign and Mania. I forgot about that. Yeah, I remember one of the big uh, differences that happens in the lava restage. Yep, yep. That was great. <laughs> I know, I love that. I was like, oh wait, where am I going? Oh, different boss? Oh, what's this? Oh my god, he actually remembers this shit. <laughs> oh my god, he's actually not as dense as it, it, everyone lights up to be. He's like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not letting this happen to me again. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. That was pretty freaking cool. And that was great. Then again, that's one of those reasons why I say Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the best Sonic game. I mean, why do you think Sonic Mania shaped mostly off of that one? It's almost like it's the best Sonic game, but because of how Sonic 2 was the one that sold the most copies, most people acknowledge that one, but Sonic 3 didn't sell as much, but in terms of the gameplay and evolution of the series, it probably added the most innovations. Yeah, I mean, I still give a lot of credit to Sonic 2, because it does deserve a lot. A lot of fun level design and... The special stage gimmick seems to be a lot the one that people like to refer to a lot. At least That's in the, the comics. One that... Yeah, secret rings. Yeah. But yeah, I like this game actually, yeah. I think we said it before, like being able to play through the same game as numerous different characters was something that not many games did well at the time. Yeah, because trying to make a game trying to make multiple characters work for a game can actually be like one of the most difficult things because what ends up happening is you either make the campaign work well for one character but not for another character mm -hmm. or you make the campaign and you try to work on the character so much you kind of forget to make a proper game around it oh sounds a little like Devil May Cry 2 yeah I was also referring to Mega Man and base as well oh yeah Mega Man uh, needing that ice wall a little too much yep yep but, yeah, like, they even had it for, like, for Knuckles had, like, unique areas to go to himself. Like, they designed it really well with both characters, allowing, like, different play styles and, like, different areas for both of them. It was really, really executed very well. At least I feel. Yeah, same here. Like, doing something like that is something to be, that's something that's to be acknowledged. And I guess that's something that was also carried over as well to Adventure as well, because... Because I think when the time we got the three of Knuckles, they were like, okay, we can make a, a game with multiple characters. Let's try and do that again. Yeah. And that carried over all the way, at least until, I want to say... Heroes? Was Unleashed. No, it carried over to one Heroes as well. Like, 06, I think, was the last one. Oh, really 06 did that. it, and then, yeah. And then Unleashed vaguely did that. Unleashed was the one that kind of... That almost was the gray area, because together. we're still Sonic, but that whole Werehog yeah. thing just... Yeah. And Colors was the first one to kind of just... It's like, like alright, everybody wants to be Sonic again. Let's just make focus on Sonic. We'll, we'll work from here. Yeah, and things kind of changed as a result for it. For better and for worse. Mostly for, well, I'm not going to say that completely because I will say I do like Generations from a gameplay perspective because I feel like that's the best Sonic has ever been in a 3D game. Ironically, when it all is, it's just rehashing a bunch of old ideas that we've already been in, but... The gameplay itself as a whole, I feel like, is fundamentally sound. And then they made a kit change to the worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. You'd think they'd be able to figure out something. Like, they, they gotta look at the strong elements of their previous efforts. You'd think they'd be able to build off of that, but they keep, like, restarting and adding something else in there in the middle of it and, like, throwing it off. <laughs> Because Sonic Team is kind of in a principal state of, I think I already mentioned this earlier when Joe was with us, when we go back to Sonic 06 and that was such a big failure, but because of its ambitions, the thing is, instead of looking back on what didn't work and trying to refine it, they end up just tossing it aside and being like, we don't want to associate ourselves with this, so as a result, yeah. we keep doing a bunch of different things, none of them seem to work, and it's like, well, why don't we just go back, and it's like, because we don't want to seem to be associated with that because that just brings back so much bad blood for everyone else, but it's like, well, it's the only way for you to really... It's so difficult for some developers to kind of just truly move forward, because in a ve like, when you see a bad game in a franchise, they don't want to associate themselves with that, because what ends up happening is, it just seems like the stir of bad blood or bad memories in people. Like, for Devil May Cry example, Devil May Cry 2, nobody wants to acknowledge that because that game overall was just generally lesser, compared to some of the other... compared to the rest of the series. Yeah. 
it's difficult to want to acknowledge that. Yeah. Or try to see what the old, those games in particular had that were lesser, and what could be improved on them because most people generally didn't like them at all. They don't see it from a critical eye. They just they like it or they hate it, and if they hate it, let's just say scrap it and move on to something else, and hopefully that works out. Yeah, that is true. They weren't really big fans of updating their games to fix their problems. Then again, I guess at their core, some of them were just rough already, so I guess you couldn't- you could only fix it so much. Yeah. But I- I kinda hope that they go back to doing another 3 Sonic game, I kinda hope that- Oh yeah, by the way, here's Knuckles and Death Egg. Oh no! Friggin' level select is still on. But, uh, I kinda- I kinda want them to try Adventure again. Like, Try another adventure-style game, but, like, some of the modern gameplay elements you picked up from, like, Sonic, like, recently. Like, I feel like they can combine those. In particular. Yeah. Yeah, like, Generations, yeah, like... I think combine that with, like, another, like, similar, like, story and world structure of, like, Adventure 1 or 2, like... I feel like they can find something really good again, because... While the gameplay doesn't always hold up the adventure games, the story in those games tend to be better than most of them. Yeah. Like, Eggman's and actually a threat, and, well, the villains are actually interesting. Well, I will say this. One thing I didn't like about Adventure, which I probably, like, I wouldn't say, uh, wouldn't say is just, I, I don't like the trope that, this is just something that's just me, maybe, but I just don't like the trope that it's like, here's this big bad guy trying to awaken the uh, old power. I didn't mind it so much in Adventure 2, I will say that, but I'm looking at it from Adventure oh, no. 1 and then those 6, and... I guess Unleashed as well by just every single time. Like, you're expecting me to believe that Eggman's supposed to be this really smart guy, but oh, he no. keeps awakening this um, forbidden power and it ends up like going rogue on him. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, who would have guessed this to happen? I'm like, I just can't help but see Dumbass written on this bald forehead being like, did you not think this was going to be a bad idea? Again? I slightly forgive it for Unleashed because he actually took good advantage of it, but well, he spared Sonic. That was his problem. And it did end up backfiring on him because of Sonic and well, Chip. <laughs> yeah, Unleashed, pro Unleashed probably has a little bit more uh, leniency with that. But Adventure 2, I, at least, I find a little bit more believable on that front. Yeah. And Adventure, well... Okay. Adventure 1, well, who would have thought that Chaos, after losing when it had 6, was just like, you know what? Fuck it! I'm gonna get all these emeralds! Fuck you! Adventure 2 yeah, was just thing. following the ideas of his grandfather. He then, in the end, realized, oh, wait, he wanted to destroy the planet. Oh, fuck. Yeah, so Not like that what one I, I can intended. Really <laughs> and then 06 happened, and it's eventually doing the same thing that Aven uh, 06 did, the same thing that Adventure did, and it's just like, well, did you not think that this was going to be a bad idea? Yeah, that's why I try to simplify the plots of the later games. It kind of ended up not panning out that well. Yeah, yeah, because none of them have this sense of, like, there's the sense of seriousness, and then there's this sort of thing where it's like, you can do serious without all this ridiculous, like, Forbidden power stuff. There's other yeah. ways to make Eggman seem like a threat without doing that same thing. That's like the thing that always seems a lot of three Sonic games seem to do. Mm -hmm. Heroes is the only exception to it, and Sonic Adventure 2 is the only one that I feel like did that sort of thing right. Unleashed did it decently well as well, so yeah. I'll give uh, Unleashed the pass. Like, Adventure 2 was probably always... Eggman at his best. Adventure 2 was definitely Eggman at his best. Yeah, Adventure like, 2 was the best. That like, he was, like, was like, the biggest threat and, like, almost succeeded in killing Sonic at one point. He almost succeeded in getting what he wanted. Uh-huh. Unlike Same forces with... where they captured him and said they killed him. Yeah, and Unleashed happened, which almost, which was also, like, his second best, I'd say. He could have killed him, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to drain your power and give you this curse. All right, have fun. Okay, when you put it that way, yeah, it does seem a little bit worse for it. Yeah, but... Forces was dumb. That was the dumbest. Forces was awful. That's arguably... Then again, I feel like that's more of an infinite problem than anything else. That's That might honestly be the worst Sonic plot they've come up with, Forces. It might be. Yeah. So Forces much build-up and it all freaking came down to Whimpers. Like, Jesus. Yeah, but I don't know which one I find worse. Forces, Whimper plot, or... Lost World being as dull and generic as it is. Yeah. And I like... think I'll lean it to... Lost like, World, because I feel like that's what defines Sonic into this sort of super kid-friendly phase that yeah. doesn't him at all. Yeah, it's more of the level design, the potential gameplay I like from it. The plot of that one sucked. 
It's like, oh, yeah. he summoned these guys to work for him and help him out. Then the end, it's, oh, it's Eggman anyway, because he's tired of them. Um, cool. Sure. Yeah, we'll run with that, I guess. It's pretty bad. But yeah, Sonic's still got potential if Mania is anything to go by. And they try to... They need to come with a good plot again. That's part of it. Like, the gameplay they're hitting or missing more... They're hitting it a little more than missing lately. But the plots are just rough. So the 2D games have the advantage of having some of the modding community actually being there to support. Mm -hmm. They had Christian Whitehead. They had... I think his dude, dude's name was Stealth, and mm -hmm. that company in Pagoda West all supporting the game and the front lines and actually creating it proper because they've been playing Sonic games for a while and they've all been part of the fan modding community, I think, if yeah. I'm correct. Because mm -hmm. I know Stealth was the one that did the DS uh, port of the Sonic... Je I forget what the thing was called. It was basically a collection of... Genesis collection? Yeah, it's like one, two, three, and Knuckles on the DS, I think it was. That sounds right, yeah. He was the one that did that, and because of and with all that experience under his belt, along with you know Christian Whitehead and his experience doing the ports of Sonic One, Two, and uh, CD, like the 2D games have a good foundation to work on because they had developers beyond just the standard Sonic Team Circle, right? On the outside to give them like outside influence that could probably help benefit them in the long run, and I hope they would if 3D. Sonic is going to make a comeback in any way. I feel like they need to do the exact same thing they did for a 2D Sonic and bring back, bring in modders from the outside of the 3D world. The question becomes, who's that going to be that can really carry that through? Yeah, I wonder. I was going to say, I wonder who's the one behind frickin' uh, the Game Boy Advance version of Sonic the Hedgehog. I really am curious, because the guy that I said his name was Stealth, he managed to make the uh, make Sonic Genesis work as it was well Sonic One work as it was intended on the Genesis on the Game Boy Advance hardware. So I am curious who was the because it I think it was Sonic House in t or Sonic Team like or the Sega Team in house I think it was. It must have been like C Team or something when they were working on that game because you can't convince me otherwise because they were using the Dim's architecture that they used for Sonic Advance. You're right. And as a result, things didn't go well, to say the least. Right, right. Oh man, I was trying to see. I see they have like a list of different developers. If that was by Sega in-house, that is just upsetting. Yeah. Cause that's just that's just bad. Yeah, it might have been Sega in-house. As like the list of developers they have, they have a company called Ancient, a company called Backbone Entertainment. Backbone Entertainment did the ones for PS3 and 360. And those ports, I'm sure, are fine. They just have Sega, Sonic Team, and M2 as the other ones. I know M2 did the ones for the 3DS. And M2 does a very good job, so I have nothing to say against them. Am I even Sega in-house? In which case, shame on you, Sega! Shame! Well, I guess, uh, Sonic Team in particular, I should say, when I say it like that. Yeah! I guess I might have always been the remnants as well, because... They were... The same team that... Uh, because by that point, I think Yuji Naka was leaving, so as a result... They're kind of just... Shaking in terms of the foundation or whatever, and they didn't really have much to go off of. Yep, it was Sonic Team themselves. Oof. Yeah. Then again, it came out at the same time frickin' Riders and 06 did. They were trying to find something or anything like, just to try well, and get some we gotta celebrate the original anniversary. Uh, all right, somebody just throw that on Game Boy Advance. It'll be good. We'll be good. You need to make sure it yeah, works. No. Just put it on. It will work. Shouldn't we refine it? It should work. It worked 15 years ago, didn't it? Oh, you poor, poor fool. All right, well, we've been rambling for a while. May as well end this here. So, yep. Yeah. I'll say it again. This is still my favorite Sonic game. And, well, I don't think anything for a while is going to change that unless Sonic Team or somebody else maybe make another fan project, perhaps. Who knows? Comes up with something to top this. Mania's the closest it's been. And, well, that was very good. But until then, this is still the king of the Sonic games. It's going to be hard to convince that me otherwise. Yeah. I'll say the same thing here. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is generally at the top of the food chain 
Mania is on par with Three of Knuckles, but because of how much later in Mania came out and how much it rehashes from this game in particular, along with some of the other games, it definitely is a little bit lesser, but that's not saying a whole lot, considering it's still a great game at its core, but this game definitely was the one that introduced a lot of the new mechanics that would follow through in a lot of Sonic games, to, at least to a certain point anyway. Yeah. I mean, Sonic was definitely a big name, and this is one of the games I feel like they like perfected what they wanted to do with Sonic. It's a shame that, well, the advance of technology that they kept trying to go in different directions. Throw in different elements, like 3D, like a 3D Blast, and Sonic Adventure. It kind of lost the... It didn't feel the same after that. Like, this is probably the best the Sonic games have felt playing. It's a style of game that Sonic is works better in 2D and it does in 3D. Because the shift to 3D is really where things started to shake up a lot. Mostly for worse, but that doesn't mean that they were all terrible for it. Yeah. I mean, we clearly sh saw from Mania, as well as the Russian Advanced series, that as long as you develop it well, it will be fun. And those games all do it well. Even Sonic 4 to a point. But not as well as all those other ones. Yeah, 4 is a different case altogether, and I feel like it's the exception rather than the rule. And then Sonic Genesis is also an exception to that rule as well, but we'll get to that. That was just a lazy Never. port job by Sega and Sonic Team, just to throw it on there. That yeah. must have been what it was. They're just like, all right, just throw it on there. Hopefully it works. And that was all they did. Yeah, that's essentially what happened. I think they they released Sonic Rush the year before that. How do you release a great polished game like Sonic Rush and then throw your first game on the previous Nintendo handheld and make it run like shit? What happens when they didn't want to bother contacting Dimps to do the game for them, but... Well, yeah. I think Dips was probably yeah, working on Sonic Adv Rush Adventure at the time. That probably seems about right. But yeah, that's my general thoughts about where this game stands on the whole. So yeah, if people, if you wonder why people don't like Sonic, well, this is not one of the reasons to not like him. This is probably one of the best reasons to like Sonic and his games. But if you can't like yep. this, then there's no hope for you. So yeah, if you don't like this, then uh, Sonic's not for you. I can tell you that. Who knows? Maybe go play Sonic Boom. Maybe you'll like the. Ow. <laughs> yeah, it's too far. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, take, take care, everyone. Who knows what game we'll be doing next? We won't be meeting up. Well, we can only hope for the best. So, see you guys around. Have a wonderful day. Later, people.